Clean white lab coats are one of the things that most people immediately think of when they think of doctors, but why do doctors in the UK no longer wear them? Hello everyone, my name's Ollie. I'm a second year medical student at Warwick Medical School. Today we're going to be talking about the infamous white coats, where they came from, why they're associated with medicine, and then why do doctors in the UK no longer wear them? And it's a useful topic because this has actually appeared apparently in medical interviews before, so there might be a bit of utility to this video after all. And it does seem a weird thing I get to, to ask a prospective medical student about why does it matter what clothes doctors choose or don't choose to wear. Surely all that matters is their ability to think properly and do medicine. And it does raise some quite interesting arguments, so we'll talk briefly about the history of the white coats and then we'll talk about the ongoing um, arguments surrounding them. So where did they come from at all? White coats first started being worn in the 1800s when medicine was progressing to this more scientific, evidence-based pursuit instead of the sort of witch doctory, quackery, dominated scene that people were used to. The modern, or modern I suppose, the new doctors of that time needed a way to distinguish themselves from the, the charlatans that had come before them. So they then adopted the white coats which were associated with science and scientific research and were obviously clean as a way to do this. Just as an interesting side note, I didn't know this until I did my research for this video, people who were carrying out post-mortems or students learning anatomy by dissection in order to become doctors used to wear black coats when they were doing this as a symbol of respect for the dead. So that was the 19th century, and then the white coats continued to be worn through into what we call a modern day, where the white coats would have continued to offer some sort of infection control, you know, it would protect the doctors from any fluids that were coming out of patients if people were sneezing droplets into the air, meant doctors didn't get chemicals and blood on their skin, it would have been a good barrier for infection. And particularly in the more modern cases, these coats would have been made of materials that were suitable to be washed very often at very high temperatures to make sure that if they were carrying any bugs or fluids or things around on them, that they'd be able to be washed and gotten rid of and make sure everything was killed. Their secondary function was simply making sure that doctors were easily recognisable on the wards. Each member of the healthcare team usually has their own specific uniform so you know who is who, and for doctors that was the white coat. It was the symbol of the medical profession, it was what marked someone as a physician, the fact that they wore these white coats, and it, to me, I think it kind of conveys a sense of authority in that kind of environment. And that's actually supported very well by the fact that even now, when you poll patients on what they would like their doctors to wear, more people say white coats than anything else. So this image has clearly stuck in the minds of very many people. Although there is the caveat to that, that it's difficult to say whether that's just because what people who are older are maybe used to, or whether it's a media presentation thing, a lot of medical representation tends to be American, even consumed in Europe and the UK, so when you see doctors on TV, a lot of them will be wearing white coats, so many people will think that in hospitals that's what doctors wear, despite the fact that in UK hospitals no one does. So then we're at the question, why don't doctors in the UK wear white coats today? And I think it's quite funny that the reason that they've been phased out is actually the same as one of the benefits that they offer, which is infection control. Basically what happened is multiple studies that were done by microbiologists indicated that the sleeves and the cuffs of doctors' white coats were harbouring MRSA, methicillin-resistant or multiple-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which is a bug that causes a lot of problems in hospital. So if doctors are carrying these bugs on their coats, which these studies indicated that they were, and those doctors are going between patients examining them without rolling up their sleeves, they could be passing on MRSA to each patient as they go on the ward round. And that might happen regardless of if the doctor was doing proper hand hygiene because it was being carried on their clothes rather than on their skin. So it was actually in 2007, a little over 10 years ago, that white coats were banned in the NHS. Although interestingly, when this happened, similar studies were carried out in the US and none of them recommended a white coat ban. So that's something quite interesting you should probably be aware of. 
I think the other major argument to make about white coats is that they create a barrier and a power imbalance between not only doctors and the other members of the healthcare team, but also between doctors and their patients. Because white coats have this effect that we've discussed already about marking the doctor as being in a position of authority and also marking to the patient that they're in a healthcare clinical setting, this can actually have effects on patients. So firstly, it might cause the patient to be less likely to question what the doctor says and give their own input, which is something that they absolutely should be doing. It also might result in some level of anxiety for the patient, and this is actually demonstrated in, in something that's called the white coat effect or white coat hypertension. And what this is, this is a very real phenomenon. It's really easy to see if you spend any time in a healthcare setting like a hospital, um, even a GP practice, when someone comes into the clinic and has their blood pressure measured in that setting by a healthcare professional, whether it's a doctor or a nurse or a healthcare assistant, their results tend to be higher statistically under those conditions that when they take them at home. So it is a very real effect and that's why patients with hypertension are encouraged to do their own home readings. So doctors have obviously had to find different things to wear since the ban and what that tends to be now is kind of business smart type wear, traditional shirt or blouse with smart trousers or a smart skirt. Although thankfully individuals do tend to personalize what they wear quite a lot and some members of staff will be well known in departments for wearing particular sets of clothing. They might wear waistcoats or bow ties, which are cool. Um, things like that. So you, you can make your own mark on things. Many consultants, for example, will wear very smart suits and it does vary by specialty as well. Some surgeons will just hang out in scrubs all the time because they're basically just pajamas. They're super comfortable. But equally in some private setting, like if you're a cosmetic surgeon, you might want to wear a kind of razor sharp Gucci suit because that's the environment that you're dressing for and people are coming for that kind of service. Just basically what people wear has to be appropriate for the wards, things like trying not to have tattoos visible, not having your shoulders visible tends to be one, and whatever you wear should ideally be washable daily just to maintain that level of hygiene. Ultimately it's all about adherence to infection control, so when you're on the wards that means um, shirts rolled up to your elbows, so practically on the wards, what that means is rolling up shirts all the way, removing any wristwatches, any bangles, things like that. You've got to be bare below the elbows and able to wash your hands with nothing getting in the way. Generally, staff are allowed to wear plain rings like a wedding band, but nothing with a stone in, as again, this is a site that might harbour bacteria. And any neckties have to be tucked into a shirt or restrained by a waistcoat or something like that, which is something that I like to do on the wards. So there we go guys, that's a quick look at the history of the white coat and why doctors no longer wear them in the UK. I think it's a shame, I think they look really cool and clearly the public has some level of trust in the image of the doctor with the white coat, but maybe they'll come back one day, who knows. I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments, do you think they look cool, do you think they are an infection control, what do you think of the evidence behind the bands? I'd love to know, please let me know in the comments section. So thanks very much for watching guys, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, go ahead and check out postgradmedic.com for more videos just like this one, medical interview tips, ways to approach the UK cat and interviews with medical students from all backgrounds. You can find me on social media at postgradmedic everywhere. Take care and I'll see you next time.